Tanya, first, thank you so much for making time with me because as we speak, we're on the eve of the 20th anniversary of your film festival. I can't believe it. 20 years, Rudy. And I think you've been there every step of the way. I think you, you know, this feels like our annual get together. <laughs> it is, but let's put it this way. When we talked last year, who yeah. would have thought when we talked about, you know, oh, next year, the big celebration, all this no. stuff is going to happen, that we had something else happen, which is COVID-19. I don't exactly. even know. How, how did you even like, when you knew all this was happening and you still had to get the film festival, you know, together, I don't even know what your thoughts could have been. First of all, I had total panic in March. I mean, it was just because we had just locked a lot of our sponsors. <laughs> so it was just like total panic. But then what really inspired me was there were so many great webinars of other film festivals that literally had to change their festival in 10 days to four weeks from from an on-site festival to digital. And I think the confidence of going, wow, if they could do that in 10 days to, you know, two weeks, we've actually got months, so let's calm ourselves because – some really big festivals literally moved everything to happen in like 10 days. No, and that's absolutely true. But the other thing too with, with your festival is, and especially with this year, because of the, the stage of racism that we've all been seeing and experiencing um, to me, because your festival has always been cultural about bringing people together and stuff. This actually makes it even a more special 20th anniversary oh my God. because of what you've been able to bring together, but what we've been seeing yeah. uh, for the last six, seven months. Yeah, you know, this, um, we'll always remember 2020. I mean, it's, you know, on top of it being the 20th anniversary, on top of it being COVID, yes, the anti black racism in particular. And what's amazing is real world, actually, real world did not focus on culture, we focused on race. So this is what's made our festival stand out 20 years ago is. People tried to soften the dialogue around race, and we we said race. We didn't try to call it culture. Um, but everything that we've talked about for 10 years, everything we've been – 10 years, 20 years, everything we've been about for 20 years, helping black, indigenous, and people of color in front of the camera, behind the camera, talking about the inequities in funding, the lack of access people had, it's like people just heard us this year for the first time, whereas other people are now scrambling and trying to create initiatives. We've been doing it for 20 years, and it's always been our goal and our focus, but um, it's it's really shocking just what has happened uh, this year and the attention that is given it. And I, I get nervous, though. I'm hoping that it's not a moment that will cool off mm. and that, you know, a year or two years from now we'll have forgotten all of this. I'm I'm really hoping that – this is finally the change we've all been looking for since I started my career in the late 70s. You know, we've been talking about these things. Amen to that. Well, let's talk about the film festival because it's a different type of film festival. How do we experience it this year? Last year, of course, and years before, we were going to theaters. We were going to press conferences. We were going to so many different things, parties, awards. I know. So how do we experience this year? How does it work? Well first, well, first of all, you go to realworld.ca and you buy a pass for $25. We've made it so affordable that you're getting to watch a lot of films on a digital platform and on Roku. It's all geo-blocked to Ontario. So if you're in Ontario, your pass works for all the films. But we also have live webinars happening. And those live webinars are worldwide because, of course, they're on a digital platform that is not geo-blocked in any way. So we have great panels from telefilm to – and these are great industry um, panels for people who just want to know how they get into development, how they get financing, how they get distribution, how you actually can make your film, hear artists talk about how they get inspired, how they create their scripts. So we have telefilm um, webinars. We have CMS, Canadian Media Fund. We have Rogers. Um, we have Shaftesbury this year. We have so many amazing uh, – the Directors Guild of Canada, they've just – um, wonderful partners that are with us, and we don't want anyone to miss those live webinars. And two big awards that went out that we've announced are the Award of Excellence went to Clement Virgo, who is an amazing director, a producer, and a writer, great artist. Um, there'll be a one-on-one -on -one conversation I'm with, with me and with him. And then Shirley Chichu, who is an amazing indigenous artist, 
a filmmaker and also founder of her own festival and institute. So we'll be doing a, a one-on-one conversation with her. And and then, of course, the awards night. You can imagine we were trying to figure out how to make the awards fun. It's all going to be on our digital platform on the 19th. All the filmmakers will be there. They won't know who's going to win. And then we have brought actors from across um, uh, Canada, actors that you will have seen who are black, indigenous, and people of color, um, like Vanessa Antoinette Antoine, who is on Digstown, you know, Adrian Holmes that you've seen on V Wars. We've got all these amazing actors, and they're going to be presenting the awards. So we're giving it a little bit of a, um, a fun polish for the audience that's watching. It sounds so amazing. And I'm so glad that you were able to, to keep this going, especially under uh, tough times, too. Um, we were talking about something earlier, something about database. It's something that's really important that we got to talk about. Well, uh, absolutely. Ever, ever since we started Real World, the one thing we wanted to activate is a database because everyone who said they wanted to create more inclusion and you know diversity in their workplace would right away say, but we don't know where to find people. And so that's the most frustrating thing is people telling you you can't find people when you know there's so much talent out there. So for years I was trying to get a database and it was so expensive. Technology you know, kept changing and changing. And finally last year, the summer of 2019, we started creating the database and we launched it. It took us a year. It took a long time working with the industry and finding out what they needed. But now finally um, in July, we launched it, accessrealworld.ca. Huge success. We, we've already shot to being the largest database. We have producers in Canada and internationally looking at the website and, um, and hiring people. We've been getting a lot of great feedback because I would say that a lot of broadcasters and a lot of production companies are now for the first time in a very long time focused on, you know what, things have got to change. Even Australia and the UK are far ahead of us. Things have to change in Canada. And so they have been, they've been wonderful. They are always going on the website. It, we even have a job posting on the website. So people are getting hired and we don't have to hear anymore, you know, where can we find them? Um, not The database actually has 98 job categories because there's so many jobs that people don't even think about. Um, when you think about locations managers and drivers and construction people and carpenters and electricians, um, we've got union people and non-union people because it's important to have non-union people have that access as well because to get in the union, you have to get an apprentice on a union show. So this was one of the barriers to a lot of um, unions and getting more black, indigenous, and people of color in those unions. So we really encourage anyone listening, if you're in the industry, in the entertainment industry in any way, or if you want to be in the entertainment industry, hair and makeup people, there are, you know, from from... Um, costume designers to there's so many different from legal lawyers all kinds of people work in the entertainment industry and we encourage you to go to accessrealworld.ca and sign up it is free we're not trying to make any money off this database we just want people to sign up and we want to just make sure there's opportunity for them in this amazing industry we call the Canadian entertainment industry I think it's very important especially now with COVID-19 it's hard for people to get this information, and they need this now when things start to open up. So this is a great starting position for a lot of people. So thank you so much for, for putting uh, this together. Thank you. Um, but we, we haven't talked yet about the films. What are some of the films you're going to get a chance to see? Well, first of all, let me say 36, 36 Canadian films made by black, indigenous people of color. I'd say that's even a record for us. Um just really great films, wonderful features and short films and web series. Uh, our opening night film, which is the greatest country in the world. <laughs> Where have you heard that? <laughs> it's, it's a wonderful kind of, it's a wonderful spoof, actually. And um, But it has a lot of drama in it as well. But it's a wonderful film. I, I really want people to... I try to, you know, sometimes when I start to talk about a film, I go, oh my God, is, is that something I should say? Like, I don't want to give that part away, but... Um, really, it is about a young boy who, a young black boy who ends up at the living with this young white man who's 
Asian girlfriend has just left him, <laughs> and oh it's just. Good. And then all of a sudden, um, an older Asian man, um, it's, 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 it creates almost a sense of an alternative family, but they really are a family, and it's like an unlikely group that ends up being a family, and it's a beautiful story. Um, and I'm trying to think of something. We have two horror films. You don't want to miss those. Um, Killer Queen. I'm sure the title alone could have told you it was going to be a horror film. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to... Uh, What's the closing so film? Ma- the, oh, um, Ken Bella, wonderful documentary, um, all, all shot in Haiti by a wonderful um, French-Canadian filmmaker, which is Will Prosper. And we really encourage people. Um, what we did this year, because we knew that you know the website was going to be so important, everything is laid out so wonderfully for, for everybody to look at. We have amazing short programs some of the killer queen that that's the other one i was going to uh corruption of divine providence is an amazing indigenous film um the other horror film is the curse of the willow song we have just a great there's something for everybody and we also have things in um french but um, english subtitle vagrant is a wonderful film about a homeless man what it's like living on the streets in Toronto. It's it's a drama actually, and he befriends a dog, and it's it has such beautiful poignant moments. You realize where he's come from and how far he's fallen, and he and, and this dog is his best friend, and it's really a uh, beautiful story. White Elephant. I love this. White Elephant is an Asian director, Canadian director, who's shot this beautiful South Asian film, and I think. I think that's the thing we love about real world when there can be, you know, crossovers in the in culture and understanding of other people's cultures and making stories about other people's cultures is something that racially diverse people don't always do. And I think when you live in a beautiful city like Toronto or a beautiful country like Canada where there is so much diversity, you get those opportunities that you don't always have. Now, and I'm going to jump in. Did I see something about one of my favorite films, Mr. Jane and Finch? Yes, I was just going to head over now to the short. Yeah, ah. no, Mr. Jane, Mr. Jane and Finch will not be in it, but the Allison Duke's other short film, Promise Me, is, and that's probably why. So she has done Mr. Jane and Finch, but this is her new short film. Uh, we have some webisodes in there, and they're fantastic. Next Stop is completely hilarious. Um, we want to get people hooked on these webisodes because then they'll go on their own internet and 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 find these um, th- they'll find these great series that are that are there. Um, Tessa Fay, which is um, another great film. <laughs> I love this one. It's called the greatest horror film ever made. It's a short film, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you want to watch that. <laughs> I you know those are the kind of titles that I love when it's just um, and then. We have um, a lot of wonderful actors are in these movies that you might not have seen for a while. So you want to make sure that you you go. We don't we don't honor our Canadian actors as much as we should, but they really are the the heart of of a lot of these stories. If you're not seeing, you remember Mark Taylor? He was on Jur- Jurassic. Yes. He's in a wonderful short film. So we want people to kill a secret. It's a uh, a great film. So yeah, there's a lot of films for people to see. Um, Too long for us to go through all 36 of them here, but we don't want you to miss uh, the really, the live, the live industry panels. These are sort of very, very key. I know. I was just going to jump in because I'm so happy about Clement Virgo. For folks who may not know who he is, this, this gentleman is a ground breaker in the films that he put together for the last what 20 years or so um, yeah at least maybe, maybe more he's maybe you know more. he, he yeah, was a prodigy. he's prob- yeah he's definitely a prodigy he is you know people don't realize but he's probably is more pr- prolific with his work than a spike lee and he is yes. our own canada you know talent and he's worked everywhere not just here he's worked around the world and he was um, executive producer of the Green Leaf, which was a series that was Oprah Winfrey's production company. He's he's just done so much, and um, uh, we're really honored to honor him uh, this yes. year, and also Shirley Chicho. Th- these are these are. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what real world has always been about. 
It's about putting our Canadian talent who are black, indigenous, and people of color front and center because they've been in the background, they've been in the shadows forever. No one ever put them front and center before, and that's very key for, for what for what we're doing and what we believe in. So important. Okay, so again, information. Where do we go to get all of our information for tickets, for Real panels, World, for everything? Re- yeah, realworld.ca. You can't miss it. Go to realworld.ca and just make sure that you either buy a pass for the films or just sign up for the industry panels, which are free, uh, the industry panels. So make sure you don't miss anything. Don't forget to sign up to the database, realworld.ca. And we will see you. I won't see you physically, Rudy, but I know you'll be at the festival. You better be watching those films. I cannot wait. I'm I'm definitely you know the panel that your panel with Clement Virgo is my number one thing to watch. I cannot awesome. wait to see this. Because again, for folks that I realize this, when I first started in the business, it was hard for me to get interviews with people. Clement was always one of those folks who always, no matter who he was talking to, he always made time to speak with me. And he's one of those yeah. guys who helped you know, push my career because I was able to speak with him. So um, I love it. He's he he is what you definitely call a generous a generous artist. And you absolutely. know it's funny when you you were saying something about you know helping people and and we have a lot of initiatives that are happening. In fact, uh tomorrow we'll be launching the Real World Producers program. So by going to the website, you'll also be able to see the application. It's going to be fierce and very competitive. We're looking for people that really want to be producers, not actors who want to be producers, not directors that want to be producers, not even writers who want to be producers. We're looking for people who really have an understanding of distribution or of law or of financing in some way and that they have an interest in working with writers and working with directors and working with actors. So it is a, I call it the producers, producers, producers program because <laughs> We are really seeking the the best producers who are black, indigenous, and people of color to apply. And the application is launched tomorrow. Thank you so much, uh, Bell Media. They are the key sponsors, the key partners of of this program. So it'll be a one year program, which um, once the once the applicants are chosen, the submission starts tomorrow. The applicants will be chosen in December, and then it'll start in January, and it'll be a full twelve months of really understanding how to be a producer in the television this is, industry. This is how we keep our industry alive, and this is how we keep it uh, multicultural, too, and it's thanks to you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for this interview. Big love to you, and thank you for always making time to speak with me. Congratulations on 20 years. i got to assume you're already thinking about how you're going to deal with uh, next year. I know. No, I think the digital platform is here to say, stay. It may not be 100%. We'll still go to some on-site, but most festivals already feel that it will be a hybrid now of between so. you know, on-site and digital because now there's so many people who can see things that don't have to drive all the way you know, to a location. People that are too far can now be a part of the conversation. Absolutely. Thank God for the laptop and our phones. So, <laughs> I know, I know. Be safe. I'm looking forward to seeing all of this fun. And like I said, anytime you ever need me for anything, you know, I always support your festival. It's an amazing Oh, thank you experience. so much. And one last word to the audience. You know, we're all fighting to see ourselves reflected on screen. So you come out and you support these filmmakers that are making the stories that talk about your issues. And people that look like you are up on the screen. Love that. Absolutely. Thank you. And, and I'm going to add one other thing. I cannot wait for next year because you know these storytellers are going to be talking about everything that's going on with 2020. Oh, absolutely. It's, absolutely. It's more, they okay. have a lot of, yeah, they have a lot of ammunition now. <laughs> cannot wait. Again, big love, be safe, and we'll definitely talk soon. Thank you so much. Bye for now. Bye-bye.